Hello, welcome to the Thursday, February 25th, 2021 edition of the Sand Center Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. These last two weeks, we had a number of high-profile takedowns of uh, malware groups, like, for example, Emotet, uh, but you probably noticed there's still plenty of malware arriving in your inboxes, and Brad took a look at a recent sample. What he found was GUloader. Now, uh, this uh, sample arrived in an email that claimed to come from Lowe's Canada. And looks like uh, the attacker here went through the lengths to actually register a domain to impersonate this home improvement chain, Lowe's-CA.org. The attachment, well, it was a Word document masquerading a little bit as an Excel file. And for a change, it actually did not rely on macros in order to execute uh, the malicious code. Instead, it used an older vulnerability, CVE 2017-11882, so a approximately four-year-old vulnerability that will then execute the malicious code and download GeoLoader. GeoLoader itself then, of course, can do whatever it wants once it's installed. In this case, it ended up installing Remco's RAT, the remote admin tool that then provides the attacker with persistent access to the compromised system. So any system that was patched within the last three to four years should be safe from this particular attachment. And remember, yesterday I talked about a patch for VMware vCenter and told you you better update quickly. Well, I hope you followed the advice because a proof of concept exploit is available and additional details about this particular vulnerability. Researcher Mikhail Klitschnikov, uh, who originally discovered the vulnerability and reported it to VMware, did publish a blog post with quite a bit of technical detail after a proof of concept remote code execution exploit for this vulnerability was made publicly available. Exploitation is also not really all that difficult. The root problem here is an unauthenticated file upload via a REST API. So all an attacker has to do is upload a JSP file that implements a shell. And with that, the attacker gains remote access to your vCenter server. Overall, you definitely should not expose vCenter to the public internet. That's what VPNs are for. So make sure that you not just patch this vulnerability, but also secure access to your vCenter console. And the research paper published by a group of Belgian uh, researchers uh, did look into the increased use of CNAME tracking. Browsers, and I mentioned this earlier this week, for example, with recent versions of Firefox are getting tighter and tighter in controlling cookies. So cookies become less useful to track users. CNAME tracking uses a DNS trick in order to bypass some of these countermeasures. If a cookie is set, it's typically set for a particular domain name or host name with CNAME tracking. The website that wishes to use a third party tracker is adding a special host name that is then aliased to the tracking company via a CNAME entry in DNS. So as far as uh, the browser is concerned, the cookie is arriving from a subdomain of the website that's being visited, which in turn allows the cookie to be set and treats it as a cookie that's part of that particular domain. But the data is actually being sent to the tracking company because this particular subdomain or host name is resolving to an IP address controlled by the tracking company. The technique itself isn't new, has been sort of written about for at least the last 10 years, but uh, more recently with cookies becoming less useful, this technique has become more and more popular. 
And finally, today we got a critical patch for Cisco's multi-site orchestrator or short MSO. The vulnerability is an authentication bypass vulnerability that would give an attacker full control over control connected devices. So something that you certainly do need to address pretty quickly. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.